Today's video is gonna be us doing this one really difficult or slightly difficult derivative problem today. Uh, we're gonna be using what we learned in the past two videos and then we'll take it from there. So let's get started. The first thing you probably noticed is that this entire expression is cut up into two different terms. So we have this part and we also have this part and this addition sign is separating both of them. And whenever you see something like that, you know for a fact that you can take the derivative of each term individually. So that should break it up for us and make it easy. So let's try taking the derivative of our first term first. So now that we were able to isolate the first term, we can try analyzing what to do. So we can notice that it's a fraction, meaning we probably have to use quotient rule, right? So we can treat this entire numerator as our f of x. And we can treat our entire denominator as our g of x. And if you remember from quotient rule, the derivative of f of x over g of x is simply equal to the low function multiplied by the derivative of the high function minus the high function multiplied by derivative of low function. And all of this over the low function squared. Right? So we have two missing elements here. We already know g of x, right? We know g of x, it's just our numerator. And we are our denominator, sorry. And we also know our f of x, which is our numerator. Now we want to try and focus to find this f derivative x and this g derivative x, because both of these are unknown. After we find those, we'll be able to fill up this formula, right? So let's start by taking the derivative of the higher function, f of x. I'll write that in red. So the derivative of our numerator is the derivative of x squared plus 5 squared multiplied by sine 3x. And we notice that this again is made up of two functions being multiplied by each other. So we have to apply a product rule, so a product rule here within a quotient rule here, which gets quite confusing, but as long as you break it down, you should be okay. So let's try applying product rule for this derivative. Okay, so first we take the derivative of the first function, which would be 2 times x squared plus 5 raised to 1. Okay, remember by power rule, we bring this down, then we minus 1. Okay, and then we chain rule it because there's another function inside here, right? So we multiply this, this thing here, by the derivative of this thing inside. So again, by power rule, we bring down the 2 here. Then we minus 1, like that. So this would be multiplied by 2x plus, this is just a constant, so it goes to 0, right? And then we simply multiply a copy-paste of our second function, okay? And then by product rule, we now need to take a copy-paste of our first function, this thing. So plus x squared plus 5 squared. Okay, and then we take the derivative of this second function and multiply it to this thing. So that would be cosine 3x and chain rule it because there's a 3x inside. If it was just an x, it would be okay not to chain rule, but it's 3x. So we have to multiply this guy by a 3 because the derivative of 3x is 3. And so this now... Okay, this entire thing is our f derivative x from over here. So now we have this element. So now we can continue by taking the derivative of the lower function, g of x, this thing, right? So write that in red again. The derivative, okay, of the lower function, g of x, is x plus 3 squared, okay, is equal to... We bring down the power to x plus 3. 
we chain rule it because there's a function inside. But in this case, we just take the derivative of x is just 1. So you multiply this by 1 plus 0 because the derivative of a constant is 0. And that's basically already the derivative g derivative x. And now we have all of our elements and we can simply fill out this quotient rule right here. Okay, these are just our answers from earlier and I just rewrote them to make it look a little neater. But basically, now that we have these elements, we're able to now get this quotient rule by filling up the formula, right? So all we have to do now <clears throat> is rewrite the derivative of this function now is g of x, right? g of x is our lower original function, x plus 3 squared. Multiply that by the derivative of f of x, which is this entire thing. So let's rewrite that. That's 2 times x squared plus 5 times 2x times sine of 3x. Okay, plus 3 times x squared plus 5 squared cosine 3x. And then enclose all of that. Minus, okay, minus the original higher function, which we just copy paste that original f of x over there, plus 5 squared sine 3x. Multiply that by the derivative of the lower function, which is just this little term here. And because we're out of space, I'll just write it under 2x plus 3, like that. Okay. Okay, so this is being multiplied by this. Now, this is our entire numerator, and our denominator is just the g of x over here, x plus 3 squared, and then we square that. So this entire thing, okay, is the derivative of this first term from our original problem earlier. Okay, honestly, the first term was much harder. <laughs> now we have the second term, which is a little bit easier. So we have our product rule, right? Because we have two functions, this part here and this part here being multiplied by each other. So by identifying that, we can write this as the derivative of the first function, which is e to the 4x plus 1, because derivative of e to the x is just itself. But because of chain rule, this thing here isn't just x, right? So we have to take the derivative of this little thing here and multiply it by this thing. So we can just put 4, since derivative of 4x is 4 and derivative of a constant is 0. Right? Multiply this by the original second function. And then by product rule, we now add a copy-paste of our first function and multiply that by the derivative of our second function. Now remember, actually let me move all of this. Okay. Now remember that the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So we multiply this by negative sine 3x. But again, we know that what's inside the sine x is not just an x, it's a 3x. So we again have to apply a chain rule. So we multiply this by the derivative of 3x is just 3. And so we have the derivative for our second term. And now, finally, our final answer can be obtained simply by combining both derivatives of both terms back <clears throat> into the original expression, right? So we have uh, our first term derivative, which is this one. And then our second term derivative, which is this one. And then we simply add both of the derivatives because they added it here. And that is our final answer. So ultimately, the ultimate, ultimate secret to doing derivatives that are this long is by breaking it down. right? So first, we've split it up into this first term and also this second term. right? And then within the first term, we notice that it was quotient rule. So we again split it up 
into the upper function and the lower function. And when we took the derivatives of the upper function, it's a product rule, so we split it up again into this function and this function. And then we moved on to the second term, where we saw that it was two functions, so we split it again, making it product rule, right? And then we just kept doing that. So ultimately, you just got to split up everything, make everything easy for you, and you'll find that taking long derivatives is mostly just copy-pasting. 